What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am back with another 2024 NFL Draft Divisional Draft Class Grade video. If you are new to the channel, I create weekly football content and just wrapped up the NFC Division in terms of Draft Class Grades. So in this video, we are going to start off with the AFC West, with the first team being the Kansas City Chiefs. So in the first round at pick 28, in which they traded up with the Buffalo Bills, they selected Xavier Worthy, wide receiver out of Texas, and man, oh man, are the Kansas City Chiefs adding speed to their wide receiver core. Xavier Worthy ran the fastest 40-yard dash in NFL Combine history, and with the addition of Hollywood Brown and then drafting Xavier Worthy to pair up with Rashi Rice, if the Seattle Seahawks defense back in the day was the Legion of Boom, the Kansas City Chiefs are creating the Legion of Zoom. And in the NFL, speed, speed, speed is the name of the game to take off the defense. The Kansas City Chiefs are doing a great job revamping the wide receiver room. Andy Reid is going to have a great time scheming up this offense in terms of Travis Kelsey, Noah Gray, Rashi Rice, Xavier Worthy, Sky Moore. Hollywood Brown, I mean, this offense is going to be speedy, and they're going to score a lot of points, and I would not be surprised if Patrick Mahomes may be a dark horse MVP this upcoming season with the wide receiver core just being very, very quick. So that was a solid pick, and for those who have been subscribed to the channel earlier on with my mock drafts, I did have Xavier Worthy being mocked to the first round to the Kansas City Chiefs. So this was a solid pick and very fitting pick for the Kansas City Chiefs. Now in the second round, they selected Kingsley Suamatia, offensive tackle out of BYU. I believe he is the cousin of Penny Sewell from the Detroit Lions, but this is such a versatile offensive lineman in the draft, possibly a top 10 offensive lineman in this draft. He's very young. He had very solid um, combine results, very high relative athletic score. He is very young. So he is definitely not a tackle who's going to be a day one starter, but I believe he will be going to a phenomenal organization where he can hone his craft, get developed. So when the time comes for him to be a starter, Patrick Mahomes can trust him while he's in the pocket. So Kingsley is going to be a great developmental piece. On the offensive line, young, athletic, he could play left tackle, right tackle, and maybe he could even be plugged in at both guard positions. So this was a solid, solid pick for the Chiefs, and they've been solid with the first two picks in this draft. Now in the fourth round, since they did not have a third round pick, they selected Jared Wiley, tight end out of TCU. Um, he had the fourth most receptions out of all tight ends, I believe, in the Big 12. Um, but he is such a solid receiver. Um, he could definitely be um, mixed matched on the offense being a big slot. I know that the Chiefs have uh, Travis Kelsey, Noah Gray, Irv Smith Jr. So Jared Wiley is definitely not going to get enough um, snaps. So he may be a contributor on special teams. But overall, I'm sure he'll probably find his way on the field in case injuries occur or probably mix it up on the offense to kind of throw the defense off guard. So Jared Wiley, one of the top tight ends this past college football season in terms of receptions, solid, solid pick with the Kansas City Chiefs still trying to boost up the receiving core. Then with their second fourth round pick, they selected Jaden Hicks safety out of Washington State. I created a video of the top steals in each round, and I actually had Jaden Hicks in the fourth round to the Kansas City Chiefs. I believe this was such a steal draft pick for the Chiefs. He's someone that I believe who could have been drafted maybe in late second round, early third round. He is such a versatile safety. He could either play deep. He could play in two high shells. He could be a nickel linebacker. Um, probably play some slot, but in terms of pro comparisons, he reminds me a lot of Jamal Adams. Plays with his head on fire, loves to pump up the defense, great pre-snap communicator, 
one of the most versatile safeties in this draft, like I said. But Jaden Hicks, solid. I'm very surprised he lasted this long, and the Chiefs got a steal with this draft pick, who I believe can help boost up that secondary and come in in nickel packages as a linebacker just due to his um, quickness and being able to play with the uh, ball in front of him. So Jaden Hicks, such an A-plus grade on that pick. Then in round five, they selected Hunter Narzard, center out of Penn State. Um, one of the most, probably a top versatile alignment in this draft. I believe he was maybe ranked number six guard in this draft, but such a uh, solid, solid um, offensive lineman in this draft. He played center, guard, tackle at various points in college. Um, I'm sure that the Chiefs are going to project him as an interior guard. Um, they might have some vacancy behind, you know, Creed Humphrey and Trey Smith heading into this final season of their contracts. So um, solid job with the Chiefs taking care of the tackle position with Kingsley, then boosting up the interior guard with Hunter out of Penn State. Definitely such a versatile offensive lineman. And nowadays with NFL teams, they're looking for offensive linemen that played multiple positions along the lines in case injuries occur or come into camp and battle at different uh, positions on the line. So this is such a key pick for the Chiefs. They took care of the tackle position. Now they're boosting up the interior guard. Then in round six, they selected cornerback Kamal Hayden out of Tennessee. Um, they were definitely trying to find a um, add cornerback depth, especially trading with Jerry Sneed. Um, they picked five cornerbacks in the previous two drafts. So Hayden may not get a lot of playing time this upcoming season, um, but he's someone that I can see just breaking into the lineup, have some development, maybe work in that secondary room to be developed a bit before that time comes for him to be a starter. Six foot one, almost 200 pounds. So he definitely has the size that the Chiefs preserve, prefer in their cornerback. So the Chiefs, you know, definitely boosting up that secondary. They had such an amazing pass defense that definitely played a big role in them winning the Super Bowl. So Steve Spagnuolo is going to have a nice developmental piece in Kamal Hayden, and he may have some time on the defense. And then in round seven, they selected C.J. Hansen, guard out of Holy Cross. This is the second interior offensive lineman that the Chiefs pick in the draft, definitely adding depth at the guard position, especially losing their top reserve, Nick Allegretti, in free agency. Hansen is definitely not someone that's going to get immediate playing time at all but when it comes to training camp um he's someone that could definitely compete for a starting spot but overall i think the kansas city chiefs had such a great draft they took care of positions at a depth um they may be one of the top nfl teams in terms of return production so i would not be surprised if the chiefs at minimum make the nf afc championship game again um, they had a solid draft, a lot of returning production on the team as a whole. So with my draft grade for the Kansas City Chiefs, I'm going to give them an A. Such a solid draft for the Chiefs. Now the second team that I'm going to get into is the Los Angeles Chargers. And I believe they had themselves a very solid draft as well. So in the first round at pick five, they selected number one tight end in the draft, Joe Alt out of Notre Dame. I'm not going to lie. I thought they were going to go receiver and select Malik Neighbors just due to how much of an immediate need they had at wide receiver by them, you know, um, trading Keenan Allen and releasing Mike Williams. So I thought Neighbors was the pick here. But with Jim Harbaugh, he's definitely going to want to run the rock a lot, win the game through the trenches. So this is very much so a Jim Harbaugh pick. So I understand it. Um, Joe Alt played left tackle at Notre Dame. Number one rate of tackle in this draft. I know Rashawn Slater is the left tackle, so uh, we'll see what they're going to do on both left and right tackle positions. If you ask me, I'm sure they might try Joe All at right tackle and have Slater just take care of the left tackle position because I don't know if Slater might give up his position for a rookie, but we don't know. But overall, Jim Harbaugh wants to build the trenches, and Justin Herbert has probably the most pressures in the pocket the past few years. So um, one of the main reasons why Jim Harbaugh went to the Chargers is because of Joe, of Justin Herbert. Um, they need to protect Justin Herbert. 
and Jim Harbaugh had to go for the best tackle. So I believe this was a very solid pick. You cannot go wrong with the number one tackle in the draft. So this was a solid A grade for me individually for Joe Alt. And then in round two, they finally got themselves the wide receiver pick and laid McConkey, wide receiver out of Georgia. Um, he's definitely going to be at worst the third best receiver in this room. I know they have Joshua Palmer. They have Quentin Johnston. Um, Quentin Johnston did have a lot of drop balls this past season, and Joshua Palmer did suffer met a few injuries, especially last year, and I believe the year before that. So I do believe that McConkey is going to get a lot of opportunities. I'm sure he's going to be someone that's going to get a lot of looks from Justin Herbert, build that rapport in training camp. And for those that play fantasy football, do not be afraid to take a shot and select McConkey in your draft. I believe he'll be one of the top sleeper rookie wide receivers in the NFL. And I'm sure he's someone that will get a lot of targets with Justin Herbert. So McConkey, such a solid pick in the second round. Um, I think the Chargers did a great job with the first two picks so far. Um, and I think even if McConkey doesn't, you know, leapfrog Johnson and Palmer in training camp, he's someone that's going to have an immediate role on offense. So overall, McConkey, such a solid pick to take care of the wide receiver position for the for the Los Angeles Chargers. Now in round three, they selected Junior Colson, linebacker of Michigan, the uh, college player for Jim Harbaugh in Michigan. Colson is probably a top three linebacker in this draft. He's someone that does not miss tackles. Um, he has, you know, Colson to have a familiar face working under Jim Harbaugh at the Chargers, along with defensive coordinator Jesse Minter. He um He's a solid linebacker. He's not someone that's going to run downhill a lot and shoot the gaps, but he's very patient. He doesn't miss a lot of tackles. Like I said before, he's quick enough to follow tight ends, quick enough to follow running backs, um, <clears throat> but solid linebacker in this draft. So Junior Colson, that is probably definitely an A plus grade for me as well. Um, think. Harold Harbaugh knows Colson as a player, uh, knows that he's not going to give up a lot of um, a lot of plays when making tackles. He's someone that if you are in his space, he's going to just get you. Um, but like I said, doesn't miss tackles. Top linebacker in this draft. Very patient. He's not going to be a downhill thumper. Um, good in pass coverage, but overall a solid pick. In round four, um, they selected Justin Abobi, defensive tackle out of Alabama. Um, the Chargers begin day three, filling another team need. The Chargers run defense has been subpar as of lately. Um, they are, are set um, on the outsides with Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa, but they're a bit unproven on the interior. So I think this was a great pick for the um Los Angeles Chargers, six foot four, two hundred seventy five pounds, first team All SEC selection with a career high seven sacks. Um, he played a big role on Alabama's defense that allowed three point four yards per rush, and without him on the field, they allowed four point five yards per rush. So he plays a big role in the run defense, and he was actually the only. Power five player in 2023 with at least 150 pass rushes as a defensive tackle and 150 pass rushes as an edge rusher. So he's someone that could be versatile in terms of stopping the run or coming off the edges. So this was a great versatile piece to boost up the interior line for the Charger. And hopefully he could help stop the run and play a big role in their run defense. Now with their first pick. In round five, they selected a cornerback, Tarheeb Still. Um, I think this is great for the Chargers to start looking at the cornerback position and definitely having a running mate for a Sante Samuel Jr. Um, still allowed two touchdowns um, as a targeted defender. Opposing quarterbacks had a quarterback rating when targeted of 35. 
Um, he struggled before emerging as an NFL prospect last season. He allowed six touchdowns in coverage, which was the third most in FBS in 2021, allowed a 91 quarterback rating when targeted in 2022, but he definitely worked hard and emerged as one of Maryland's best players in 2023, in which he earned second team all Big Ten selection. Six foot, 189 pounds, ran a 4 5, 40 yard dash. He lined up primarily on the outside. 77% of his snaps came out wide, but he could also play the snap. So this is very smart of the Chargers starting to kind of boost up the secondary. And then in with their second pick in round five, they double dip at the cornerback position and selected Cam Hart, cornerback out of Notre Dame. Um, Cornerback is, um, I want I don't know if it was like a serious need for the Chargers, um, but I think it was a very smart for them to double dip at the cornerback position. Um, this is definitely a position that you can never stop chasing. Um, the Chargers now have six cornerbacks on the active roster. They added, you know, with Cam Hart, six foot three, two hundred two pounds. He's someone that's very versatile. And scheme wise, he could play man coverage, also play zone. Um, he played a big role in Notre Dame's defense, and I believe Notre Dame's defense was pretty legit this past season. So Cam Hart isn't a slouch. He's someone that may compete for snaps and probably compete with still in training camp to get a starting position. So Cam Hart, he's someone that I would not be surprised if he wins a starting role in the secondary. But Cam. I think it was a good value for the uh, Los Angeles Chargers selecting Cam Hart in round five. Then in round six, they selected Kamani Vidal, running back out of Troy University. Vidal is a solid running back out of Troy University. I believe in the past two seasons, he's had 141 broken tackles with 80 plus this past season. This guy can break, run through arm tackles. He's pretty legit. He set Troy career rushing yards with 4,010 yards, broke a single season record with 1,661 yards and a single game rushing yard record of 248 yards. Um, the Los Angeles Chargers are quite set at the running back position. They have J.K. Dobbins. They have Gus Edwards. But Jim Harbaugh is gonna run. Is gonna want to run the rock. So Gus is going to get a lot of um, opportunities. J.K. Dobbins is going to get a lot of opportunities, and Dobbins is coming off an injury. Um, but they're going to run the, the ball a lot, and I can see Vidal getting some opportunity towards the middle or towards the second half of the season. Injuries can happen at the running back position. I'm sure a lot of you fantasy football players know that. Um, when a team uses a lot of running back usage, injuries and nicks and bruises do occur so we can see Vidal earn some playing time he's definitely someone that's going to add depth at the running back position but overall he what is um he has room to improve in terms of overall technique but he's someone that can step up and compete in pass coverage five foot eight 213 pounds definitely uh, a nice sleeper wide receiver I'm sorry, a nice sleeper running back in the draft. I would not be surprised if he gets some snaps during the season, um, especially with the type of bully ball um, scheme and style that Jim Harbaugh is trying to emphasize. So Vidal is someone to look out for, for the Chargers running back room. Definitely going to add depth, but if injuries occur, you will hear Vidal's name a lot. Then in round seven, who I believe is the best deal in the seventh round, especially if you saw my steal of each round in my videos i had brendan rice as the steal of the seventh round going to the los angeles chargers i am surprised he lasted this long um to me i believe he was like a fourth round maybe late third round draft pick top 15 wide receiver in the room he ranked third in the pac 12 in average yards per reception with 17.6 fourth in the pac 12 in touchdowns with 12 touchdown passes in 2023, he was Caleb Williams' go-to on the run a lot. I believe he's had about 
nearly 20 touchdown catches in the past two seasons with um, Caleb Williams at quarterback. Um, but Caleb Williams trusted him a lot at USC. Um, Brandon Rice may not get immediate role opportunities, but I'm sure if you know Palmer goes down or Quentin Johnson um, seems to underperform, we can see Brandon Rice have some opportunity. And I believe that McConkey and Rice will be a nice youth duo for the Chargers. Brendan Rice, I believe, is a good steal in the seventh round. Six foot three, 208 pounds, the son of Pro Football Hall of Famer Jerry Rice. Um, but I believe that Brendan Rice, he's someone that could be um, a solid fourth you know, receiver for the Chargers at depth. A good steal. He's definitely my top steal in the seventh round for the Chargers. So for the fact that he lasted this long and the Chargers were continuing to add, you know, competition at the wide receiver position, especially with Allen and Mike Williams being called, I think this was a nice steal pick for the Chargers. And then in their second round seven pick, Cornelius Johnson, wide receiver out of Michigan. Johnson is um, a familiar face for Jim Harbaugh. He played at the University of Michigan. Um, six foot three, two hundred twelve pounds, four year starter receiver at Michigan. Um, he's had hundred and nineteen receptions since the start of two thousand twenty one, the sixth most in the Big Ten. Um, Johnson mainly played wide out wide in his career, with eighty four of his eighty four percent of his snaps over the last three seasons coming up lined up outside. Um, I think this was you know quite smart of the Chargers to continue to triple dip at the wide receiver position, get younger, get cheaper options. Um, he has the frame to box out defenders, cornerbacks, hook routes, um, such effective receiver working in the deep middle against zone looks and runs hard after the catch. So um, I believe personally with the draft picks that the Chargers got, Joe All, number one tackle, McConkey, probably, but damn near top five, top six receiver in the draft. Junior Colson, who I believe is a top linebacker. Then he started to boost up the interior defensive line with Justin Abobi out of um, Alabama. They double dip at the cornerback position to boost up the cornerbacks and um, elevate that pass defense. Kamani Vidal, running back depth, who we can probably see during the season. Still the seventh round, Brendan Rice, and then another wide receiver, Cornelius Johnson. To me, personally, I think the Chargers had a solid draft. I'm going to have to give them a solid A for the Los Angeles Chargers. The third team that I want to talk about is the Las Vegas Raiders. In the first round at pick 13, they selected Brock Bowers, tight end out of Georgia, the number one tight end in the 2024 NFL draft. I was very surprised that they went this route to select Brock Bowers. I thought they would go tackle. I believe Fuwago was still available. Cornerback, every, you know, Terry and Arnold, Quinn, Jan Mitchell were still there, and pretty much any defensive player was still available. So I'm very surprised that they didn't go tackle, maybe a defensive pick, but maybe the Raiders want to give the Chiefs a taste of their own medicine in terms of tight end production. But Brock Bowers, tight end, receiver, hybrid, option um i believe he's got to be a starter um, i believe they'll probably have michael mayer as an inline tight end and probably have you know bowers kind of play some big slot or pay on you know two tight end sets but this was quite shocking to me but he's such such an explosive tight end um Six foot four, 240 pounds. He's more built like a gliding wideout and, and instead of like a lumbering tight end. Um, he's someone that I believe will probably make quite an impact for the Raiders' offensive production. I mean, you have um, Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, Trey Palmer, I believe Michael Gallup is there. Now you have Michael Mayer, now Brock Bowers. This, I'm not going to lie, this is a pretty enticing offense. Um, I know they have Gardner Minshew at quarterback and Aiden O'Connell at the quarterback position, but this is a quite of an enticing, you know, receiving option for the Raiders. Um, but I am very surprised that they did select Brock Bowers, but number one tight end in the draft. Me, personally, I'm not a big fan of selecting tight ends in the first round. I believe we get quality production in the later rounds but 
I believe that the Raiders decided to go with best player available. Brock Bowers was there, so they pulled the trigger and got the best player available at pick 13. Um, and then in round two, they selected Jackson Powers Johnson. He was a center for the University of Oregon, but they did announce him as a guard. So I believe that he will probably come to the Las Vegas Raiders as a guard, probably at the right guard position as um if, especially since they signed veteran Cody Whitehair in free agency. Um, Powers Johnson has started games at both guard and center spots in college. Last season, he started 13 games at the center position in which he was an All-American selection and was you know, nominated as the top center this past season. But he does provide quality versatility to play the guard position. Um, Will he start as a rookie? Um, I believe that he'll probably start if he beats out White here at the right guard position. I mean, Andre James is the Raiders center and, you know, re-signed his offseason, three-year, $24 million contract. So don't think he'll be benched. Um, but I think there's a reason why the um, Raiders announced Jackson Powers Johnson as a guard. Um, great chance there'll be an opening at the right side, especially him competing for that position. So Jackson Powers Johnson, a lot of people had him mocked in the first round, but first to tell center guard position, I think this was a good value pick for the Raiders. He wasn't picked too high. He wasn't picked too late. I think this was a nice sweet spot for the Raiders to draft Jackson Powers Johnson and definitely continue to focus on the offensive side of the ball. Then in round three, they selected tackle Delmar Glaze out of Maryland. To me, I believe this was a reach. Um, I think Glaze projects more of a backup swing tackle at the NFL level unless he wants to compete and play as a guard in which he will probably has a higher chance to start as a guard. But me personally, I believe he's more of a backup swing tackle. Um, I say that he's a reach because I think he's someone that could have been there around round five at worst undrafted free agent. I understand that the tackle position was – dropping like flies in the draft. So I can understand like the Raiders trying to pull a trigger at the tackle position. But I think this was a huge reach to select Glaze this high. I'm sure, you know, Glaze has a long wingspan, nearly at six foot, but um, he's not very known to be overly physical. He can get knocked back a few times. Um, I, I just, I'm just not a big fan of this pick. You can't go wrong building the offensive line. I get it. You can't get wrong with that. But I just, in terms of just big board draft selection, where he should be if drafted, to me, I think this was quite a reach. Maybe the Raiders could have gone at the cornerback position here. Um, maybe, but um, I think this was quite a reach for um, the Raiders selecting Delmar Glaze in round three. Then in round four, they selected... The Cameron Richardson cornerback out of Mississippi State. They finally addressed the cornerback position in the draft. Six foot two, ran the 40 yard dash in 4.3 seconds. I believe he had one of the quickest um, 10 yard splits at the combine. I believe the second quickest 10 yard splits, but Richardson does a great job reading the quarterback, splits high low route combinations, end zone looks, very reliable tackle tackler who led all SEC corners and tackles in each of the past two seasons. Very aggressive runs, uh, run defender who flashes a strong punch and does a great job slipping through tackles. He's someone who's not afraid to kind of throw the hip stick at someone. He's had a com He's had about 164 tackles the past two seasons, seven pass breakups. So um, he's never had an interception. So he, he's probably not the ball hawk that you're looking for. But overall, great tackle production, seven pass breakups, someone that you could probably rely on being closer to the line of scrimmage and making tackles behind the line of scrimmage. So I think it was a great job of the Raiders addressing the cornerback position in round four. Then in round five, they selected Tommy Eckenberg, inside linebacker out of Ohio State. Tommy's not going to be a starter um, he's someone that I can see, you know, adding depth and translating into a backup role. Um, but in terms of, you know, developing and getting acclimated to the NFL, um, there's no better, you know, 
person for um, Tommy to learn from than Coach Antonio Pierce. Antonio Pierce, linebacker for the New York Giants, has a Super Bowl ring. He knows the in and out of playing a linebacker position. Um, Tommy is more of a thumper at the inside linebacker position as opposed to being a pass coverage specialist. But overall, Eckenberg's had 82 tackles, two and a half for a loss, a sack, and a forced fumble in 10 games last season. So a great thumper linebacker. He's like a true Mike. Um, I'm sure, you know, he's going to provide depth. Antonio Pierce will definitely, you know, coach him up, develop him, and hopefully he'll be a starter in the future. Then in round six, they decided to select Dylan Laub, running back out of New Hampshire, an FCS All-American, all-purpose player, someone who's probably going to be projected of a potential kick and punt returner in the NFL rather than a rotational running back. Um, if you look at the depth chart for the Raiders, they have um, – Zamir White, Alexander Madison, and Amir Abdullah. So he's going to be fourth on the depth chart. But if Dylan wants to see a lot of playing time, especially with the new kickoff um, rules and the formation, um, we may see Dylan a lot on special teams in terms of a punt returner and a kickoff returner. Um, he's averaged 31.1 yards on kick returns and 11.3 yards on punt returns and a touchdown on each um, in the FCS Playing for New Hampshire, he rushed for 749 yards, nine touchdowns, averaged 4.7 yards per carry last season. Um, but he, he's someone that I can see being a return specialist at the NFL level, may not have a lot of um, burn on the NFL field as a running back. But I think this was a uh, quality choice of the Raiders, just focusing on the special teams, adding a return specialist. And then in round seven, they selected Trey Taylor, safety out of Air Force, one of the top defensive packs this past season. He provides immediate depth behind starters of Marcus Epps and Trevon Morig, um, but he stands at six foot, 213 pounds, has the size and instincts to be an instant contributor when given the chance. He is the cousin of Hall of Fame safety Ed Reed. He had three interceptions, one pick six, 74 tackles, five for loss. Uh, four pass deflections and a block kick this past fall. Um, with Trey Taylor, he's someone that I can see playing the strong safety role, aggressive run defender who can shift through traffic, has good stopping power when he meets the backs in the hole, can open up and run with tight ends and backs in coverage, and led the team with three interceptions with one for a touchdown in 2023. So, Going to be a great depth, strong safety at the next level. Great backup option. And I believe he is actually the first ever defensive back drafted out of the Air Force Academy. So um, with the Raiders taking, you know, adding depth to the secondary, especially in like a division when you're facing Justin Herbert twice a year, Patrick Mahomes twice a year. So definitely adding more depth to the pass defense. Such a smart decision for the Raiders, especially if they want to be competitive in the division and push for a playoff run. And then with their second, seventh round pick, they selected MJ Devonshire, cornerback out of Pitt. The Raiders concluded their draft by selecting their second a cornerback in Devonshire, a very physical defender who does not shy away from a bump and run coverage. Great in man coverage, speedy defensive back. Um, he did run a 4.4 40 yard dash, 5'11, 186 pounds, and led Pitt with four interceptions this last season, including a pick six, 10 pass breakups in 12 games, and nine starts. Um, I think the Raiders had a solid draft. Um, solid draft overall. Um, I know the Raiders went eight and nine this past season, but with them, you know, adding you know Brock Bowers, boosting up the defensive line, and Jackson Powers Johnson, Glaze is probably gonna have um, some opportunities to probably work his way into as a guard, but definitely provides tackle depth. Um, adding. Um, depth to the cornerback position especially at the linebacker position so overall i think the las vegas raiders had a solid draft not um not a crazy oh wow draft but i think they did quite enough to make themselves competitive in the division as well as adding depth at um positions in need the tackle and cornerback position so overall i will give the las vegas raiders a solid b plus 
And now last but not least, the Denver Broncos. In the first round at pick 12, they decided to stay put and not trade up for a quarterback and decided to select Bo Nix, quarterback out of Oregon. Now, does he have elite traits in terms of like Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels through a threat ability? No. Is he the worst quarterback in the draft? Absolutely not. I think Bo Nix is a top five quarterback in this draft. Um, do I believe he got drafted higher than I thought he would? Of course. I think Bo Nix is a second round pick. Don't think he possesses elite quarterback talent, but the Denver Broncos did not have a second round draft pick. So they definitely needed to take care of the quarterback position. I don't think Sean Payton wants to go into the season with either Zach Wilson or Jared Stidham as the week one starter. So with reason, the Broncos had to take care of the quarterback position early in round one. They cut ties with Russell Wilson. They're paying him $38 plus million for him to play on the other team. So I understand them going the cheap route. Um, Sean Payton finding the quarterback that he wants to craft and develop. Um, but overall, Bo Nix is a smart quarterback. He's not someone that's going to throw 80 miles per hour or throw a ball maybe 90 feet without much effort like Michael Penix. But Bo Nix is a smart quarterback. He led um, FBS in completion percentage. So he's smart with the ball, doesn't give up a lot of turnovers. If someone is not open deep in the field, he's going to dink and duck the ball. And honestly, you can't hate it. If you dink the ball four times, Three times, you get four yards out of it. It's a first down. So Bo Nix, smart player. He's such a Sean Payton type quarterback. So with reason, I understand them gaining quarterback this high. Um, so I think it was a solid pick for Bo Nix. Reach, yes, but with reason, they had to take care of it in, rare, in round one. So round one, Bo Nix. Then in round three, they just selected Edge, Jonah, Jonah Ellis, Edge out of Utah, um, Jonah had a solid career at Utah. Um, he is a technical pass rusher who makes it very tough for the blockers to lock on him. Um, he had 12 sacks in 10 games in 2023, has in a very effective counter punch and rarely stays blocked when he doesn't win with his first move. Very disruptive run defender who likes to slip through blocks and can definitely kick inside to rush the passer on twist, um, top 10 edge in this draft. Um, one of the Broncos key needs heading to the draft was looking for an outside linebacker in their three, four scheme. I believe that Jonah Ellis can, um, provide an upgrade, um, provide some additional pass rush. I believe he provides, you know, he's a perfect profile for a stand-up edge rusher role and has the tools to be an immediate impact player, especially on a rotational basis. He'll definitely work with Jonathan uh, Cooper and Baron Browning to give Broncos more assets in the division and apply more pass rush, especially when you're going against Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert twice a year. So when you're going against elite quarterbacks, especially two in your division, you have to bring heat. Got to add more edge help, collapse the pocket. So I think it was very smart of the Broncos to kind of bring a rotational piece and Jonah Ellis, who has a nice counter punch has good moves a great technical pass rusher so i think this was very smart for the broncos to kind of think on the defensive side and add the edge position to get after the quarterback then in the fourth round they selected bo nix college teammate wide receiver troy franklin and honestly i am a big fan of troy franklin i thought he could have been drafted maybe Mid to late second round, I think Franklin is a solid wide receiver option. He's going to be a solid wide receiver option to the Broncos, especially with Jared Judy being going to the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Franklin set the Oregon single-season receiving record for yards, touchdowns, and 100-yard games in 2023. Has an extra gear to run past corners when he gets a nice release and tracks the deep ball well. And there is nobody in the wide receiver ball in, in the in the wide receiver room that knows Bo Nix than he does. He knows Bo Nix's throws. He knows what Bo Nix is looking for. So I think having someone that is very familiar with Bo Nix's game was a smart decision by the Broncos organization. Um, Franken flashes the ability to make the defenders miss 
runs hard and is a threat to pull away after the catch. He had some drops um, last year and didn't quite come down with contested catches like he did in 2022. But overall, he has the ability to make difficult catches throughout his career. Um, he's someone that I can see playing, you know, a good role in the wide receiver room, being Bo Nix's safety blanket if Sutton is um, not available because Sutton is, you know, number one option in the Broncos wide receiver room. But if Bo Nix comes in as a week one starter, I'm sure he's going to look at Troy Franklin a lot. His former college teammate, wide receiver, Franklin could just take the top off on the defenders, he could, um, take the extra year, tracks the deep ball well. So overall, I think this was a solid pick of the Broncos just giving um, Bo Nix a wide receiver that he's familiar with. And I think Franklin can have a, a solid season with the Broncos, especially um, I don't think they're going to be quite competitive this upcoming season. I think they're going to play a lot of keep up ball and have a lot of garbage time and kind of, you know, try to air the ball a lot to keep up with the other team. So I think this is where Troy Franklin may see some opportunities to make plays for the Broncos offense. And then in round five, they selected cornerback Chris Abrams drain. He led the SEC and tied for fifth in the nation and passes defended in 2023. Um, former receiver, but turned into a corner, but does a great job attacking the ball and picked off seven passes in three seasons at Missouri. Um, great hand fighter, stays balanced. I think he may be one of the you know solid um, cornerbacks in this draft, honestly. He's someone that may play some slot at the next level, um, but he ran a 4-4, has 40 passes defended in his career with Missouri. Definitely be in the mix with Wallace, Mathis, and Riley Moss. Um, but at 5'11", 179 pounds, I think he's someone that is going to need to show that he can battle with uh, more physical NFL receivers. Um, he's someone that could probably provide potential value in the return game. He did return kickoffs in three of his seasons at Missouri. But with his size, and especially with his you know ball production, 40 passes defended in his career, um, I think that um, he could you know, compete on the outside. But honestly, I think he'll be a solid slot corner for the Broncos. Um, Patrick Sertain still there. Um, the Broncos did sign Levi Wallace in free agency this month. Wallace did start 70 games, but I'm sure the Broncos would not be opposed to adding competition in the starting lineup opposite of Patrick Sertain. So overall, Chris Abrams drain. I'm a bit surprised he lasted in the fifth round. I someone that could see maybe selected in the fourth round, but definitely adds value in the return game and definitely in the secondary. Um, solid, solid decision for the Broncos. And then with their second pick in round five, they selected Audric Estime, running back out of Notre Dame. He has a raw power presence that the Broncos haven't had in a run game in some time. I know they have Javante Williams, who does a great job breaking tackles, but SMA, 5'11", 221 pounds. And he's quite shifty for a big body running back. Um, and his four, um, the Broncos were like one of the worst teams in the leagues in terms of rushing touchdowns. They had eight this past season. Peyton did promise that they should get better and be more efficient in the run game. The running back is literally a young quarterback's best friend especially when they're going against a good defense SMA will have an opportunity to carve out some playing time and I'm sure he's someone that may see a lot of playing time around the red zone situations and just be a bully back and be a great rotational piece for Javante Williams um but I think this was a solid pick um SMA was expected to go in the third round but he didn't run I don't think he performed well at the NFL Combine, so his draft stock did plummet a bit. But I think, you know, Javante Williams and Audric Esme will create a nice smash and dash duo, killing, you know, good clock management with SMA running the ball. Williams and SMA will probably be one of the top running back duos. And honestly, this could be a probably a bold prediction, but I think this running back duo can possibly lead the league in, you know, bro broken tackles in terms of the running back room. But Audric Estime, big body back, good 
good going to be a good compliment to Javante Williams, who is also great at breaking tackles. So I think that was solid. Um, and then in round seven, they selected the Von Vele wide receiver out of Utah, six foot four, two hundred and three pounds at the combine. He will be one of the oldest players to be drafted. Um, he will turn twenty seven years old in December, so he is going to be an older rookie. Let's just say um, he is the um, he is the second wide receiver in the um, seven player draft class, and he faces a scrap to find his way into the rotation, especially if Tim Patrick shows that he has regained his form after back to back seasons impacted by injuries. Bavelle ran a four. Point four seven in the 40 yard dash has punt return skins as well very athletic he can carve out a role in the offense but his age he has a tight career window so if he needs if he's trying to fight for an opportunity to start he's gonna have to show up in training camp and compete against tim Pat- tim patrick but six foot four 203 pounds um definitely you know the broncos are taking a, a deep flyer at the wide receiver position this late and then with their final pick in the 2024 nfl draft in round seven they selected nick gargliulo center out of south carolina very versatile he's played left tackle center and left guard in his career so he definitely provides offensive line versatility moves very well and showed his past season that he can hold up against defensive linemen and the sec with cushion perry's Departure in free agency. The Broncos have a crowd of young players, you know, ready to compete for the job. Um, um, the Broncos definitely, you know, took a flyer taking a center with their, you know, second, seventh round pick. Um, very fundamentally sound with quickness to cover up down linemen and the range to climb to second level in the run game. Doesn't have, you know, finishing power of a mauler. But he will definitely block to the whistle blows or probably blocks until he hears 10 different whistles. So to, to let him know that he's done blocking, um, does a great job picking up line stunts and pressures and pass protection. But overall, I don't think the Broncos had a bad draft. I mean, the only head scratcher to me is, you know, drafting Bo Nix this high. But I don't think that's worse. Especially, I don't think that's bad because they need to take care of the quarterback position. But overall, they did do a solid job getting themselves a rotational edge, trying to get after the quarterback in that division, getting Bo Nix's wide receiver teammate at Oregon, Troy Franklin, getting a solid cornerback, Chris Abrams Drain, running back duo, Javante Williams, Audric Estime. So overall, I think the Broncos had a pretty good draft. I know a lot of people were saying they got like an F, D, or C, but I'm gonna just kind of I'm gonna give them a B. I don't think it was the worst. I don't think it was the best draft, but I think they did enough to um had themselves a quality draft but overall thank you so much for watching this video if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe to the channel i do make weekly content if you enjoy the contract please give the video a thumbs up i do make weekly content every mondays and friday but overall thank you so much for watching and catch you next week